peaks or river systems and flows downstream. Why um, places like Sustainable Jersey or um, the Water um, Watershed Institute, which is a big watershed management area, or the state DEP are very interested in this is because, again, what we do, especially because we're headwaters in these two watershed management areas, what we do impacts what happens downstream. And there's a lot of people living downstream. So, that's water kind of coming into Roosevelt, water going out of Roosevelt. But what does water do when it's actually in here in Roosevelt? What does it do for us? So some of the things that water can do, does do for us, is it creates a habitat for all our flora and fauna that we very much appreciate and love. Um, you walk along Empty Box, you even go up to Rocky Brook. I mean, we're so rich in kind of, the, you know, the, um, some, uh, some native species. We do have a lot of invasives, but we have a lot of natives that we are stewards for. Um, it reduces anxiety and stress, and I actually found an article that said that people who spend time near water are more creative. I'm not exactly sure how they measured that and what their statistical sample size was, but they claim that this is true. Um, obviously, it provides drinking water for us. Whether you are using on the Roosevelt water, uh, public water system or you're on a private well, the, ro the water in Roosevelt, we get water that we use to drink, we use to <coughs> grow our plants, we use to feed our pets, um, and it keeps our own gardens and lawns alive. So we also need water, we rely on water, we rely on clean water, so if Millstone dumped some toxic thing into the water, we may know about it, unfortunately. Some of the cons of water in Roosevelt, and um, again, some of you living on Pine, Tamara, North Valley, probably know this, um, it floods our roads. We don't, we, if we get too much rain or the beavers are very active that season or whatever, um, when it floods, it will also pick any rainwater, any water that runs off of what we're calling an impervious surface, which means it's not seeping back into the ground to go back into the water table. It's going to pull off any pollution. So any lawn that people are putting, you know, who knows what chemicals on, any driveway that oil from cars, any all the asphalt itself, that is all running into our water system. Um, and like uh, Dave is going to talk about, why don't we drink the water in our rain barrels? Well, there's a really good reason why we don't drink water in our rain barrels. And it contributes to flooding not, and pollution, not just here in Roosevelt, but downstream. Like I said, we have to start assuming responsibility for people in Trenton, for people in Princeton, for Petty Lake, um, because we have to be the good stewards here. Um, so getting a little bit deeper into uh, the flora and fauna, the state actually, or actually the federal government, I think, designates different creeks at different levels. Um, most of um, the Assunpink Creek, which you can see in the darker turquoise, is what's called um, fresh water Number two, NT, which means no trout, creeks. Um, some of these creeks, the, the ones in the turquoise, are, um, I think it, no, they, the class A, class one, category one. Those are considered category one. So those are considered at even more, um, more beneficial to the flora and fauna that they support. The other creeks are also freshwater, non-trout creeks because they're not stocked, they, whatever, but 
um, they're not considered category one. Now, I don't know how often the state comes in and decide, or the, you know, decides which. I think that has to do with the political borders. Hmm? Uh, all, the land that's under Roosevelt is the part that is not category one. And the one that's under Assapink is in category, is category one. Well, these are category ones and they're kind of, un one of them is under Roosevelt. N no, that's uh, Assapink land. Uh, it's under their control. Okay. So the only part that isn't is the part that is under Roosevelt control. And it doesn't make any sense because it's the same water. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, this is the map that I got from the um, DEP that oh, showed oh, no. here's I'm, where the but category it's, one It has to are. do with the political borders. No. Yeah. yeah. You say political, but you mean home ownership. You mean the, the wildlife. It's not categorized on that map as category one in Roosevelt, but it is category one in the, the land that is under African control. Which is within the boundary of Roosevelt, but controlled by us. Yeah. Okay. That's what you're okay. Got it. Because I'm looking at the boundary of Roosevelt, saying no, no, still no. In see, Roosevelt. see, there's that that section is under Assapink's control. Right. Right. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I don't know, but it's political. But it's <laughs> but these boundaries, you know, these are all man-made boundaries. So it's not like saying, oh, well, if I'm pouring something bad into the creek here, it's kind of know to stop right here because this is acidic. Um, the other thing that the, um, that the, um, the DEP maps are wetlands because wetlands are very important for flora and fauna and, you, and we need to create what are called wetland buffers or wetland boundaries. Um, Roosevelt is actually pretty good about ensuring that there is no building right up against the creek because then you destroy your wetlands that really border all of our creeks here. Um, and wetlands can change as we know with the beavers, uh, where the boundaries are can shift around, but right now the state is designating the areas in blue as being designated wetlands. Um, and I'm not going to talk much about this because we have the expert here in the room. But one of the things uh, the state and all these organizations would like to see is that are we monitoring our creeks to see are they, are they able to sustain flora and fauna. Um, and this is data that I got from Mary. And, and I just wanted to say our whole stream monitoring team is sitting in the oh, room here. Oh, excellent. So Courtney right. and Jane Rockers. Oh, okay, <laughs> hi. Uh, <laughs> So the whole team, so thank you team. Um, because, thank you for your service. <laughs> because this is something that the state, the watershed, you know, all these watershed in initiatives want to see is are you looking and seeing how well is this, are these water bodies able to support the flora and fauna? And obviously, so you're looking at things like, you know, what kind of nitrate levels, what kind of phosphate levels, um, pH, uh, turbidity. So, but I'm not going to talk much about it because we have all the experts sitting in the back there. So if you have questions, ask them. Um, in terms of reducing anxiety and stress, uh, we have a wonderful trail, woodland trail, that travel, that basically walks along Empty Box Creek, uh, which is maintained by the Environmental Commission and the Green Team and all of you. Two people sitting in the front row who help maintain that trail. Um, and that's very important. And that's one of the things that Sustainable Jersey looks at is, are you providing access uh, for people to enjoy and really get that relaxation from your water bodies? You know, if you're fencing everything off, that's not going to be good for anybody at a certain point. So are you providing that kind of access so that people can enjoy this kind of, you know, your, your water, your uh, surface water and nature and kind of, you know, get creative. Uh, another way water comes into Roosevelt is through aquifers. So uh, we are on the um, Magathi, um, 
I can have the first word. Hold on, hold on. Potomac Raritan Magathi Aquifer System. We're actually on kind of two branches of that aquifer system. That is where we get our public water from. So we have two, Roosevelt has two wells on the um, middle, I think it's the middle branch of the, of that aquifer system. This is a huge aquifer system, obviously, that pretty much goes all the way down the eastern coast, or a good portion of the eastern coast. Um, it's uh, part of the coastal plains aquifer system. Um, and even people who are on wells, you know, depending on how deep their well is, they might be tapping into the aquifer. Obviously, aquifers need to be recharged, and recharge happens when water is allowed to seep into the ground, not just flow, you know, flows off in some storm water pipe, but it is allowed to seep back into the ground and recharge the aquifer. So again, this is important. We're, this is all part of a bigger system that we need to recognize we need to be stewards of. Um, in terms of potable water, uh, sustainable Jersey wanted to see how good is our drinking water? That this would be an aspect of water that they're interested in. Where do we get our drinking water from? How good is it? Who's monitoring it? Um, we had, an, we have an 80 year old system um, that was actually um, pretty substantially um, revised in uh, like 2015, 2016. Um, so actually our water system, our drinking water system is pretty good. So, I mean, you might complain about the, the cost, but it costs a lot to maintain a potable water system for a tiny town like this. Um, uh, in terms of test levels, these are the tests, I think this is the, this is the last one I've sent you, the 2023. Yeah. So these are the 20, 20, 2023. John Holden, I think, is doing a great job of making sure we are drinking clean water, that it meets all the standards, that the lead, is, is, uh, lead levels are kept to where they're supposed to be. Um, now, one thing to bear in mind, the, when he, when the public water system supplies water, it is, if you are on that public water system, it is basically only going to the curb. It's not going, so the public water system is kind of not responsible if your pipes possibly have lead in them from the curb into your house, or the pipes in your house. Uh, some, the older houses used to use lead solder in their pipes. Um, I, I actually did talk to John about this. He said if that is the case, obviously you might want to have it tested, but just let the water run, uh, like for a couple minutes in the morning, and that should kind of flush out any lead that might have seeped in. He did say that they try to keep the pH level, I forgot if it's high or low, uh, so that the lead is le less likely to leach in the event that you do that a particular house has lead um, soldering in it. Um, but again, from, from kind of from the curb in, it's, it's on you to figure out whether your water is good or not. Obviously, people on private wells, they're totally on their own. Water going out. Um, our water doesn't just magically, our wastewater doesn't just magically disappear. Uh, it has to go into our wastewater treatment facility, which is part of our Roosevelt, part of the bill you pay, the, pub, the utility bill you pay, is water in and water out. Uh, that water has to be treated properly because that water eventually flows into Assenpink Lake and again then flows down into that watershed area. Um, the sewage treatment facility unfortunately has not gotten as much love in the past decade or so as the water treatment facility. Um, so there are problems with our wastewater treatment facility right now that, again, I can't really talk much about it, but I know that the borough council is on top of it. They're looking at it, they're getting studies, they're getting input, um, and they're gonna have to figure out how this is, 
it's been a great system for the last 80 years, but it, you know, it wants to retire. Um, it wants a little TLC. Um, the other thing, though, even with even if the system was working perfectly, this DEP, the state DEP, has recognized, hey, what you're putting in your wastewater here in Roosevelt is flowing down to Trenton and the Delaware, and they're starting to get much more stringent about things like phosphorus levels. So one of the complications that the borough is having to face is you know, we don't know exactly what levels the DEP is going to be setting things at. We have to kind of, but we can't wait for the DEP to decide while our trickling filters are falling apart. Um, so this is another thing that they're kind of trying to juggle. Um, as far as private wells, we have, uh, I think it's a total of 23 uh, houses in Roosevelt. They're all kind of up in the north and then the east. Um, and again, they have to. They, so they're on their. They're responsible for themselves to check their water, their water and then how their lead le lead levels and how drinkable their water is. Mostly with wells, you have pro you might have problems with um, bacteria, uh, kind of those kinds of um, issues. But they would have to test that and treat that. And they would also have septic systems that would have to be, when they sell a house, definitely their septic system has to pass. But again, their wastewater, you know, seeps into the ground. So all of this water, all of this stuff, you know, what comes in is going out. Um, in terms of the water it, within Roosevelt, this is a flood map. Now, the New Jersey DEP has recently um, gotten very active in flood rule regulations. And they've looked at the, the FEMA flood maps and said, this is not going to cut it. We need to up our game. FEMA is giving us these flood maps, which we know are not really going to keep up with these 100-year storms, which are happening every year, with the quantity and um, um, frequency of these storms, we need to up the game. So New Jersey now uses the FE what they call FEMA plus three. So it's the FEMA maps which say, okay, a brook when it floods is going to go to here, and the G DEP says, but add another th uh, three feet onto that. So the, when we say FEMA plus three, we're talking about where the FEMA is, where FEMA has said flooding is going to incur and the DEP is now added, saying, add three, add three feet onto everything. Um, they're trying to be much more proactive because flooding is happening much more frequently. Yeah. Uh, Hillary, where is the outline of Roosevelt on that one? Um, uh, yeah, I should have put it in red. So, can you see the, ma the mouse by any chance? I see a little. This is Windsor area. Road. Okay. Um, this is Roosevelt down here. Okay. Kind of, kind of coming down here. Um, so, you know, you have your um, Rocky Brook. Obviously, has a lot of flood potential. Uh huh. Assin Pink uh, has a lot of flood potential. Um, so. Where is Tamara on that? Um, okay, so Tamara would be right here. Here's Pine. Okay. Here's Tamara making this little loop. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll outline it in red like I was doing for the others. All right. But. And the, and the gold is, is the new uh, three-foot so, rule? So the goal is, the, yeah, the, the plus three. Okay. You know, so... The federal DEP, you know, FEMA uh, is saying, well, you know, flooding isn't such a big thing, and New Jersey now is saying, uh, yes, it is. You know, look, yeah. look at all this this gold here. Um, this is what we're predicting. Um, you know, just on a purely financial basis, 
a lot of people use these FEMA maps just for flood, you know, flood insurance. Mm -hmm. This impacts flood insurance. So even if you're just looking at it in terms of dollars and cents, can you get flood insurance if you are following a FEMA map that doesn't adequately capture how bad the flooding is? And Hillary, that, that part that you're just highlighting, is that box, empty box brook? Um, the, the tan part there? Yeah, that probably is. Okay. I mean, I, I didn't curious. make the map. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guessing that is, is right. because yeah. it's kind of coming in across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, and that would make sense. Yeah, right. That's you know. Um, I think anybody can walk along empty box even, and you see that it's kind of expanding its boundaries, especially after a big rainstorm. Um, it's kind of. Yeah, and that, and. Behind Tamara and uh, and Pine, there they were in blue in already. Is that correct? Well, this is yeah. This was blue already, um, but now see Tamara is here. So they they were not, you know. I guess. But behind the house is. Uh, right. So I'm not sure yeah. how far like Dave's house. I don't know whether. Dave's house would actually be in blue or gold because I don't the map isn't good enough. I mean that would have happened. It's not as precise as Yeah, I mean I could zoom in, but I just didn't do it for this. Okay. I love maps. <laughs> huh? I love maps. <laughs> um, in terms of so the other thing that the New Jersey DEP is re trying very hard to do again, because they recognize, you know, Manville was a total mess, what, two years ago, because all the stormwater flooded out, nothing, nothing seeped back to recharge the aquifer, nothing stayed where it was supposed to stay. It didn't stay in place because we have all this impervious surface, more and more and more. We're in New Jersey, we're like the queen and king of impervious surfaces here. Um, so everything flooded into Manville. And lo and behold, Manville was flooded, and one of my favorite restaurants was closed for two years. So I have a vested interest in this. Um, we do have a stormwater map. It's this is kind of like the best approximation of the stormwater map I could get at this point. The DEP is the New Jersey DEP is um, so. The way it's worked up till now is that we've had municipalities are in what's called tiers. We have tier A and tier B. And we, Roosevelt has up until now been a tier B, which means we've had pretty, you know, we're a tiny town, we're in a very rural area, so we were getting like a, a pass. Tier B for stormwater, what the state was asking for in terms of, you know, what are you doing in terms of your stormwater runoff for the rest of the world? Oh, tier B, yeah, you're okay, whatever. You know, you have some water. You're, like, good. You're, just fill out your name here, and then you're good to go. Uh, the state has decided that they're doing away with the tier system, which means that unless something happens, we will have to meet what are, what's called tier A, stormwater regulations, which are much, much stricter, which really look at what kind of pollutants are you putting into the stormwater that's flowing down the stream? How are you maintaining your stormwater? How are you, you know, even things like how is your borough DEP washing their trucks? Uh, so they really, it's very strict. There's a lot of monitoring. There's a lot of regulations going on. A lot, a lot of reporting, which we have never done before. So this will be a learning process if, you know, if it went in. I think it's going to be, I don't know that we're going to be, us tiny little Roosevelt is going to be able to fight the state at this point. Um, or should we? You know, we do impact what's happening downstream. Um, so we need to up our stormwater game. There's something called MS4. Oh, I'm sorry, Michael, can you? Throw my phone outside. That's my sister. <laughs> Good ring tone. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, no, he's literally throwing it outside. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, well, you, you said I did, I know, I know. It's like the one time my husband pays attention to me. <laughs> <laughs> so the MS4, one thing Roosevelt does have going for it is that we're not what's called a combined stormwater septic system, which some towns still are when they're really behind the times. So we have this municipal storm system, septic storm system system, or septic storm water, uh, it's, but there's four S's there. <laughs> we have to meet these higher um, standards now for MS4 permitting, because the state is basically saying, all municipalities, you cannot, especially ones that are in headwaters. So we, any, any t municipality is in the headwater where you're gonna have water flowing out, you know, if you're gonna put all kinds of fertilizer and uh, pesticides and everything all over your lawns and your fields and whatever, and that's flowing down to people who are needing that, using that for drinking water, that's a problem. Yeah. Hillary, can you clarify what you mean by stormwater? Like, what does that mean? And, like, in, in Roosevelt, is that, is that what's going into the uh, stormwater drain in the street and goes directly to the cre creek with no treatment? That's what stormwater so, is? So, yes, because they're separate systems. So we don't, we, we don't, we do no treatment. Um, we do have a little bit of a problem now because apparently our septic uh, pipes have like maybe a little bit of leaking issues. Oh, you mean our sewer pipes. Our sewer pipes. Sewer pipes. Our sewer pipes, sewer pipes, our sewer pipes are leaking. Are leaking. leaking. And sewer. so they, so there actually is a merging of stormwater and mm -hmm. um, wastewater, which should not be happening, but that's only because our pipes are being And that's happening like sort of as the pipes, it's sort of like ground water is storm water coming into a stream. Well, but then once it comes, once the storm water kind of infiltrates the sewage pipes, we're spending a lot of money and putting oh, a well, lot of chemicals on into pipes. treating Oh, it goes storm both water ways. that. Yeah, I was, I was, I was yeah. Yeah. But it can go both ways. Right. Yeah. I was thinking it, leaking it, out. But oh, it does that. It, do, it, it does that also. Okay, and then that ends up in this creek of right. So that will end up down in the aquifer. Yeah. Well, um, yes. Since those pipes near the waste treatment right. go right through the wetlands, yeah, it, it's leaking there. Yeah. In and out. Yeah. 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 Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So the stormwater. Yeah, you're right. It's the it's this map, which is very outdated. We're hoping to get a new one. Um, but yeah, those drains um, that you see along the side of the road that has a little fish made yeah. a new symbol on it. Um, now, one thing the state is very, so in the past, you know, the whole mindset was, well, if there's a storm and there's a lot of water, we want to rush the water out of here as quickly as possible. Rush the water away from our house, rush the water away from our streets, so we're gonna build all these concrete basins and culverts and whatever. That's not politically correct. That's not at all the mantra anymore. We're now talking something called green infrastructure. So if you talk to anybody from the state and they say, oh, what are you doing with your stormwater? Please just say, green infrastructure. We're all for green infrastructure. Which <laughs> bioswales, swales, bio swales yeah. rain gardens, keeping the water in place, getting the water back into the aquifer, getting the water back into the ground, getting the water back, rather than dumping it into empty brook so that empty brook becomes so big, it's now, you know, ruining its boundaries, mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. worse, infiltrating our mm -hmm. wastewater treatment. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. So, if anybody asks, Say, just say green infrastructure. <laughs> We're on it. We're like doing what we can. Um, and this, but this is something we have to come up with a plan for. This is part of what the state is gonna be requiring of us is like, how are we building green infrastructure into our municipal stormwater system? It has to be a, like a, the integral, the major part. And Ellen and I 
are going to a workshop, um, which hopefully they will tell us some things. But if nothing else, they'll tell us. Oh, they're going to tell us things. They can tell us whether or not I'll remember anything. Yeah. Um, but even just understanding where does the storm water go? Like, where is it flowing from and to? You know, we love to just blame the beavers for everything, but the beavers really are not really um, causing half of this problem. Um, so in summary, we have water coming in from the creeks, from rain and snow, from our aquifer system. We have, within town, we're using water for drinking, gardening, recreation, and our wetlands habitat. The water is also um, impacting our flooding, flood our streets, our houses, our basement, um, and uh, turning some of our forests into swamps. You, some, I mean, if you go up to like Rocky Brook, you'll see it looks like a big swamp. Um, that used to be forest, but because the brook kind of overflowed and just backed up, those trees died, and now we have this big swamp, which is also very interesting. You know, it brings its own habitat. Um, and then the other part of it is that water goes out from Roosevelt, impacts downstream communities, impact, um, and just has a much larger impact on, you know, the world uh, than just uh, little us. Um, and so your job is to read the water story, but most important, uh, start thinking about water. Start thinking about, you know, what aspects of water are important? What aspects of water do we need to kind of um, remind the borough council to be working on? I know they're working on, they have to, well, they are being forced to work on the stormwater issue. Um, they're being kind of forced to think about the flooding on some of the roads like North Valley and, and NERCO. Um, they're certainly being forced to think about the waste treatment plant. Uh, because they're learning that the concrete is uh, falling apart. Um, and then think about what we, you know, using that information, how do we move forward? So that's it. And here's the. Oh, tonight you're talking? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. okay. So we I'm not going to rest. Okay. Thank <laughs> well, goodness. Thank you, sir. End discussion. <laughs> I read this a couple of months ago, and just to take as much data and make it intelligible to me, that's, that's an achievement. <laughs> um, I don't know if there are any like career teachers here or anybody who's mm -hmm. taught as part of their careers. I don't know if John has. <laughs> and I have some, you know, I think, I think I, you know, doing these deserved discussions, I mean, one of the best things, I think the best thing about teaching is you learn stuff, you know, and, you know, I've learned so much about recycling since, you know, two months ago, and, you know, we're, we're going through all our garbage now, looking for the little numbers and things, and, and I know what to do about that, and um, I guess the other thing about teaching is that if you think you know something, try and teach it, you know, and you'll find out, you, you might not know it as well as you think, you know, I, I taught ESL for a while as a volunteer, and I thought, I know how to speak English, I can teach it, you know, and it's like, ooh. And, you know, my students would come to me and they'd ask me something like, what does ashamed mean? Well, I know what it means, but how do I explain it? Okay, so all that is by way of my intro to a water bottle. <laughs> I've, I've built exactly two water barrels. Um, I built one for myself a year or two ago, and I did it a little differently than, um, uh, about a month ago, Ellen and I went to a, a water barrel workshop uh, that's sponsored by, that's uh, developed by Rutgers. And I have a few of the, 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 the plans here, and, and if you need more, I can get you more. Um, so these are actually what I'm going to talk about tonight. And they did it a little differently than I did, but they have a, you know, they have a method, so I'm, that's what I'm going to go by. Um, barrels were, I found these were expensive and hard to come by, um, but I found a guy, the, the guy who used to do, um, what was the name of the deli? Four Mike Seasons. Seasons. Four Seasons Deli, who unfortunately went out of business. He's guy it was a great business but he did go out of business and he has a bunch of these for fifteen dollars a piece which is which is an incredible price. Uh, yeah, it's up. an incredible price. It's an incredible <laughs> price. Um, he's up in uh, Perth Amboy. I went up I bought three barrels. Uh, 
one to practice on and screw up. Which is, that's one that one's not here. Um, but I was willing. To, you know, if anyone's interested, I'll you know we'll make another run up there. And you know, if you'll you know if, you, if you're interested in doing something like that. So let me set up where we can see what I'm doing now. There are different ways to do this. The barrel that I did myself. Let me get this up here. The one I did myself have the, has a spigot very near the bottom, and I seemed and I remember that we used we passed a, a wire down through here and slipped the nut down and had some kind of method, but I couldn't I couldn't find how I had done that before. So we're going to do it their way now. The instructions here I went nuts trying to do this because I was trying to put a spigot in the bottom, and I at you know that's the last resort I went back and read the instructions and it says. Your, your bottom hole, your spigot, can be as far down as you can reach, okay? So, um, I called uh, Ben Johnson, who's, I don't know, 6'3 or something like that. I said, can you, I thought he was going to be here tonight, but he's not. This is, if you're Ben Johnson, you can put your spigot here, okay? If you're Dave Teich, you can put your spigot back here, okay? So that's, that's where I'm going to put it. Now, um, the way this is set, and oh, oh, and by the way, if you can find what I have to do first, I have to, I have to put a hole in the top, thank you. Uh, I, I did that on purpose, yeah. Um, you, I'm using a, um, a saber saw to cut in here, and a one inch, a one inch uh, hole saw to cut the holes for the spigot and for the, and for the, the uh, overflow. Um, even though these are called three-quarter inch, okay, you drill a one-inch hole and it fits. Uh, this plastic has to thread pretty well. Ha happens to thread pretty. I should talk a little bit about you know why you would want to do a rain barrel. Um, you know, a you save water. There have been times, especially you know, uh, last year during the drought, uh, we ran into situations since we have maintained a pretty large garden. I think our garden's about, I estimated about twelve hundred. Um, so we, and you have to water it, you know, I don't water my lawn, I don't really care about the lawn, but I do water the garden and, you know, you can actually get over that, that hundred and, hundred and sixty, hundred and eighty dollar a month, uh, water bill at times, which I don't like doing. So you can use rain water. Um, I'll emphasize what they emphasized at the workshop we went to, don't drink this, okay? Don't ever drink this. Okay, this stuff is coming off your roof. There's birds that poop up there. There's, you know, who knows what is in the shingles. Don't drink it, okay? Um, they were even saying just put it on the soil and not the plants, but I don't, you know, it's, that's, that's a little too fussy for me. I mean, I just, I just, I use it pretty often. It's convenient. You can get it in a place where maybe you don't have a hose by that part of the house. It fills up very, very quickly. Um, this is a 55-gallon drum, um, one rainstorm, you know, one decent rainstorm will easily fill you can fill it six times in one rainstorm, depending on, you know, how big a roof and all. Um, these are put under a roof or a shed, and the, the, you know, the basic arrangement is you would have your, your, your drain pipe coming down off the roof, and you divert it into, into, this, into this barrel, uh, but you have to filter the water, and the way the, this setup is working um, is to have a, a pond basket, they call this. You can use a, a colander, you know. Um, you wrap that in screen. This is about oh, 30 inches square, and we'll put a zip tie here, and then this will just fit in there. And the way uh, the way we're going to set this up is the, the the drain will just hover over this. Basically, it'll just sit there. Um, the one I built a couple years ago actually has a smaller hole, and the drain goes into it. But you still need you need a screen. Uh, one because you get so much junk off the roof. Uh, shingles will, will shed lots of lots of grit. Um, you know, you get leaves and stuff. And also, you want to keep mosquitoes out. Um, you really want to keep mosquitoes out. You know, any standing water will attract mosquitoes. Uh, the um, the faucet is not the spigot's not too much of a problem because that's closed. You won't get you know insects entering there. Uh, but the the uh, overflow valve. Um, what I'm doing is I'm putting a little I don't know if you, you know a little a little hose screen in there. If you don't have one of these, you can cut a chunk of the, 
of that screen and just and just wrap it on there. Um, the overflow valve. This one, okay, so if this is where the spigot is, okay, this this overflow comes off to the left. You can put it wherever you want. If you want it behind the barrel, um, I would put a hose on this that would you know direct the water to wherever you want. Um, just so that you know, otherwise it's just it's just spilling out, which is sort of fine. If that's you know, that's, that's kind of that's okay too. Um, I'm using some in addition to the rain barrel and the pond basket. You'll need a couple of pieces of hardware, which you can usually get at Home Depot or Lowe's. I had kind of a hard time finding them, so I went to Amazon. You know, you can, you can always get anything there. Um, these are um, three-quarter inch uh, male connectors. Uh, this is just a, and, and what, these, what, what this is, is on one side it's three-quarter inch pipe thread, on the other side it's, it's standard garden hose thread. They're different, okay, but this would be, this would be your, your overflow valve. A hose would come off here, and that's just for, for overflow. You're, you're getting the, the feed of your water comes from down here. You get quite a bit of pressure off this. I was, I was surprised at how much pressure, I would guess more pressure than I'm getting out of my, my faucet at the sink. Um, I, you know, it's, it's, um, you get, uh, I, I use it, I wear cleated boots when I'm, when I'm gardening. You can wash the mud off it. Um, you get quite a bit of force out of it. So, first thing uh, I have to Jay, do. Hmm? If you have it higher up, you get more pressure, is that right? Lower. Lower. Lower, you get more pressure. No, I mean, uh, the barrel. I don't think so. Yeah. Yes. That's why they have, yeah, well, the water towers or the water well, tanks are it's the, it's the height of the water versus the height of the end of the hose that you're yes. attached to. Yes, yes. So if, if the okay. barrel were higher and you okay. we were below the bottom of the barrel, you'd get more All pressure. Right. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, I'm familiar with that. You have to figure out how to get it up there. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Oh, now this. Do that when it's empty. <laughs> but, yeah. That's right. When this is full, you want to have it be sturdy because it'll be right. heavy when it's full. Oh, when it's, yeah. When it's full, yeah. this weighs 440 pounds. But you you won't water your hanging baskets with it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the one I have at home is mounted on. I put down you know, four by fours, um, pressure treated where they touch the ground, and then I mount. I put cinder blocks. I like to have it at least like two feet off the ground, just so I have room to fill a watering can or something like that. Okay. Um, we're going to be putting in another one. I'm going to build a concrete footing because even the one I have, it just it's tilting just a little bit, you know, and, and so they're, they're heavy. Um, I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but you know, it's something you want to be careful. I'm just going to finish this hole. I didn't want to make a whole lot of noise. And, Time to do this, but just to give you an idea, I mean, this is, it's pretty easy stuff to cut. Drilling logs for, for mushrooms. So, 
And then the deer eating the mushroom sure it was just not right. Boy, I'll tell you. I tell you. I'm not I'm not a I'm not no a deer, respect. I'm not a deer killer, but I was a little bit motivated. That's <laughs> fitting right in there. Now um, before I do that, I have to Do you want to switch it to the the hole that is better for you? Oh yeah. Let's do it where I can. It's a better job than just coming over to help him with gardening every day. <laughs> You only have to have Ben Johnson once <laughs> to put your rain barrel together. I wonder if you could make a faucet and a big work for the now. Let me see if I can. I think that's what he meant when it was the original one. He actually got the components together if he used a lot of it. So, so let's see what we're going to do. 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 Let's see what have about 19 rolls of these around. I guess they you probably be. also want to rinse it out before you use it oh, because those little bits of plastic. Oh yeah, yeah. Clogged. Oh yeah, yeah. You definitely want. To. And this, this was uh, I don't know. It was poly sorbate 80 or something. You know, it was. Can you say microplastics? <laughs> so, you know, wrap it with some of the uh, Teflon tape, and you want to wrap it in the direction that you're going to. You know, the, the direction against which you're going to screw it so that it doesn't unwrap as you're... I don't know if you've ever used this stuff, but it, uh, you know, it's very good stuff, but I'm wrapping it this way so that when I apply the screw, it'll go... The, 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 the screwing direction will be in the same way that I wrap the tape. Or it'll just to me, but you'll, no. you'll see. see? Because it unravels. this will be the nut. No, I understand the principle, but it just looked to me... Okay. Oh, I see. Uh, That's because he was turning the. I see. He was, he was turning. You got the male part, not the female. Now I pro. Yeah. This is a, this is the a male thread. You can do. I mean, you can do this. This will go into the barrel. This one I reach in. You know, the female end of the nut will go on. I could do it the other way around with. You know, if you happen to have a female threaded, spigot around. You know, so it works both ways. I probably should have threaded this in before I put the tape on because. This is, you know, but this 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 um, should thread. This this uh, plastic does seem to thread pretty easily. Now the instructions say to use caulk. You can, yes. You can make it watertight without it. No, no. You, we're going to use caulk on this. Okay. okay. I just like to get my threads in first. Okay. Okay. When you use caulk. You don't need to use a big giant tube like this. You can get little, little tiny tubes. Do they come in small? No. They do. They come in very small tubes. And it can um, be very hard to get the cork out of. Okay. And you should wear gloves and stuff. Smells and it's just, it won't hurt you, but you just won't get it off your hand for a week. So should we yeah. open the back door? We can do that. What kind of caulk is it? This is silicone caulk. And this is, uh, this is all purpose waterproof. This is window and door projects. So, it's a window. How often do you find you have to clean the screen? Uh, the screen? Pretty often. Um, you know, um, a week or two, because it's special. I mean, we've got so much junk falling right. out of the out of the air. Right. But it's, it's it's also pretty easy to do it because you can just take this and you know, go like that. Um, so.
they just use, I think, um, there's, there's different configurations. I think in the instructions here, they might just be using one of these, one of these mm -hmm. lock nuts. Um, I don't particularly think that's secure enough. So if I can reach down here, I'm gonna. Can you reach? <laughs> I can reach. I could actually, I could have gone a little deeper than this. So with all the water that you didn't use, did you pump it out? Um, to use I was it? gonna say, how do you get the water that's below the that's faucet? Well, you can tilt the whole thing. Get some but of would that be how how heavy would it be? I mean, like that's about a third. That's about a third. Yeah. Be over 100 pounds. Oh, be over 100 pounds. <laughs> You're not lifting it, you know. Yeah, but me and rain barrels, we might be like wrestling on the ground after yeah. all that was finished. <laughs> it's like it's like helping a drunk friend get into the car. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a rain barrel put you in a Half Nelson? Never have. But you could also, I think, um, you could cut the whole top out and just yeah. use the screen over you the can. top. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And then you could pretend yeah. it's a screw on your own. Right. I, I clean the barrel out once a year um, just, you know, just because, you know, at the end of the uh, growing season, when it starts to get cold, whatever's in there, I don't want it to freeze. Um, so I, you know, I turn it over, dump it out, wash it out. Can so you need to, that, that's an interesting point, so you need to have um, an alternative for the off season, well, like a, yeah. down set, a down spell extender if you want to bring the water away from your house. Yeah, I, what, I, what I did last year, I mean I just leave the spigot open, which, you know, as, as I said on mine, it's down lower, so I don't seem to have... And you don't have a problem with the freezing? No. Okay. okay. But somebody will help. This might be okay with just the, um, the thin inside because you're not attaching and unattaching or turning it. I mean, it's getting right. Less use right. You don't need you don't the need caulk. the caulk on this, um, but I do I do put the nut on the inside. Yeah, right. Okay, and and I this uh, the, the screen. Right. Right, I put that in here. The one I have at home I use without uh, a, a, a hose. Extending from just because it's in a place where it doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was thinking about that. So a screen would make it more important then, whereas if you're attaching a hose, you know, it'd take quite a bit of yeah. to get into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. We were looking at our. We were hearing the, the bees. They were making. They were uh, busy inside our drain pipe. Great. And um, yeah. Are you sure it wasn't in Bitsy Bitsy's pipe? <laughs> Also, where you would connect it if you had two rain barrels in a line. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's. There's a place over in um, Hamilton that sells a kit, um, but that looked like so far advanced to me, um, where they have like sort of you know chained rain barrels together. Um, and I think they have their their mm -hmm. um, output on the bottom. Yes. Which means you won't have much water left in the yep. barrel, but you'd have to have some kind of special way of propping it. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I got I got some uh, primer. Just uh, they have plastic primer. It's uh, whatever Krylon or Rust-Oleum or something. And I got I got some gray to, just to put a primer coat. And then I I have huge plans for how I want to decorate it. <laughs> As tightly as you can. Yeah. With a wrench or just by hand? Um, I just did it by hand. Um, it it feels very tight and it's caulked. Yeah, but there, but that is under pressure, as we said. Yeah. Yeah. Here, so. Excellent. This this you know I'm not crazy about the looks of this. I, I prefer to have a pipe directly directly into. But could you open one of those white caps and do some kind of yeah, piping could, into yeah, it? Yeah, they, they actually they have a, you know, this this does open here. Um, that's not really big enough for, I mean, you'd have to yeah, sort of funnel it or something. Um, yeah, you'd have to have a different way of, you know, channeling it in. Yeah, yeah, but that's only a couple of inches. Um, I would like to. Because yeah. I think that would be interesting to everybody. Okay. I have to wait till I get my concrete pad built. <laughs> Which, you know. Well, we could film mine because it's going to be on cinder blocks. The okay. one that we, sure. you know, you built one and I built one. Yeah. There is an irony that you're planning on creating an impervious. <laughs> Listen, if you saw the water in my yard, yeah. I have one of those Tamara Drive places that's... I understand. I think of you every time I flush. Yeah. <laughs>